Hey you guys, welcome back to the Cornucopia. Today we are cooking some Quain Tran recipe fried Louisiana fried chicken. I'm also going to do his recipe for um, gravy. I'm going to have my own recipe for gravy, but we're going to try Quain Tran today. He makes it look so good, so we're going to try it out. And I'm going to make some um, cream garlic mashed potatoes to go with that gravy. Um, we also have some um, macaroni and cheese left over from the other day, from yesterday. And we have, um, I think that'll be it for today. So that's what we're going to be making today. So I hope you're hungry. Let's get started. We have our pots on the stove. We have our cast iron skillet, our deep cast iron skillet here with the grease. This is going to be for our potatoes, corn, and I'm going to make our gravy in this little guy right here. So also what we have, let me show you, I already pre-did um, the flour for the fried chicken and I will place the ingredients on the screen for this. This is the seasoned flour. This is the wet batter. I'll place the ingredients for that also. And this is just the first flour dip. It's just plain old flour. And this is our marinated chicken. I marinated it overnight. <clears throat> And I'll put the ingredients for that also. So now, let's get started. Let's fire up this oven, I mean the stove, so we can get some yummy goodness going here. We're going to get our potatoes boiling and our corn um, in some hot water also, so that we can get that stuff started. And... Uh, get this yummy meal underway. So anyway, how was you guys day today? I hope all of you had a good day. Um, leave me something in the comments to let me know what's going on. We can get to know each other. I'll look at all the comments and respond to you guys because I can't wait to get to know you um, so that we can, you know, do this, do this together. I'm excited. Are you excited? So anyway, I'm starving as always, <laughs> so I can't wait to get this done. I want to show you, um, I already took my prenatal today. I have to take it so that I can have enough energy to actually make this video. <laughs> but I have not taken my cod liver oil, so we're going to do that now. Let me open it up. And this cod liver oil, let me put that in there for you. Make it focus better. This cod liver oil, I take it because, um, first of all, it's good for your skin. It's also, um, it helps to, it helps with my, um, elderberry syrup I've been having um, like a stuffy nose or something for like the past couple days and um, it started going away and I got busy and I stopped taking this so my nose is still a little bit stuffy so we're going to take this Sambuca uh, elderberry syrup and my cod liver oil pills like I said I already took my prenatals which are probiotic also which helps to Clean up your gut. Puts the good germs in there to kill all the bad germs so that your immune system can function properly and fight off whatever little bacteria or whatever that you get from the air or whatever else that you have going on. Some other little children or anyone else you come in contact with. 
It helps your natural immune system work the way that it should. So, I have my cod liver oil. And trust me, you want the peel and not the actual oil. It's gross. I mean, you know. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But I choose the peel. Okay, that's that. And if you're wondering what I took it with, <clears throat> I use Bolt House Farms. These are my smoothies that I drink. Um, I drink them when I'm not pregnant also, but I drink them definitely when I'm pregnant. This gives me energy. Um, sometimes when I wake up, I don't have enough energy to cook anything or move or do anything. So the first thing I do is grab this and have a nice glass full. And it gives me enough energy to get into the kitchen and cook and do whatever else it is that I need to do. So yeah, I'm Bolt House Farms. And I use this particular brand um, because I've done a little research and this seems to have the best and most responsible ingredients. Um, this is the green goodness. It has all this good stuff in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what's going on in there. That's just some of the things. And then we have all of this good stuff here in there. Move my face. Maybe it'll focus better. All right, so that's that. And I have, you know, several different flavors that I love that are healthy. I might get the, the Blue Goddess, I believe it's called. I get the Strawberry Banana. Um, and I get the Mango. And I made some delicious carrot squash soup one time with the carrot juice like this. That was delicious. I accidentally got the carrot juice. And I was trying to get the Mango. They looked just alike. And I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. And um, I couldn't figure out what to do with it because I don't like carrot juice to drink by itself. So I went and bought a fresh winter squash. This was, of course, in winter time. I made a delicious winter um, carrot winter soup. But anyway, that's that. And also, let's get, go ahead and start getting this stuff. And this water we'll do corn and it's just me and my daughter so like I said I try to be very efficient I think I did that backwards I did I want to put the corn in this one let's do it like this this is a cooking show not a um not a, a blooper, it's a funny show, so we don't want to go viral for burning my hand while I'm trying to cook. I guess they say all publicity is good publicity, but we're going to skip that this time. <laughs> so, I'm putting four half ears of corn in there. Um, two for each of us, which we are probably not going to eat two a piece, but I don't mind cooking a little extra. We can always eat the rest tomorrow just in case. But I like to actually, I don't like to cook extra corn um, just because it's too easy to boil. I like to just boil it fresh and get it over with. Alright, now for these potatoes. We're going to chop them up because oh yeah, give you a baby bump view for today. There's my second little princess. My very strong little princess. I swear I feel like she's going to kick a hole 
in that amniotic sac and jump out of here and say hi or something. I don't know. She's super strong though. But anyway, there she is for today. Alright, back to these potatoes. So, I want to, uh, I want to wash my potatoes because I like to leave some of the skin on. Not all of it, but some of it. So we're going to run these in some water to wash. And I scrub them with, um, I have a dedicated scrubber brush for my potatoes because even when I make baked potatoes, I still scrub them. Um, of course, because we eat, we eat the skin. There's lots of nutrients in the skin or the outside flesh of all fruits and vegetables. And um, you don't want to rob yourself of all that good stuff. Um, the skin is the protective part of the fruit or vegetable, and so it has to have a little bit extra to protect it. So here we go. Um, let's see. Get this boiling very good in the front. Gotta cut that down. Cut that down. Get back to this. Uh, so when I peel. I don't use a peeler. It's more fun to me. So when I skin my potatoes, I don't use a peeler for whatever reason. I like to just use my knife. And I don't really like all the skin off, like I said, because it has good stuff in there that we want to put into our bodies to help make us the healthiest we can possibly be. So... We're just going to sparsely skin this thing. Also, I guess if you want to, um, you can boil the potato first and then with the skin on, then take the skin off and um, then take it out of the boiling water. Put it into some ice cold water. <clears throat> And the skin will slide right off. But for right now, this is what we're doing. And if you happen to hear any uh, background noise, my daughter is over there doing her lesson. We're multitasking. So we're going to take off probably about 50% of the skin. Alright, that's good. Put this down to the disposal. I wish I had a garden because all this stuff makes for great compost. All right, let's chop these babies up. So, since we're making mashed potatoes anyway, I just cut it in half. Cut the half in half. And cut those halves in half. And we're just gonna kinda cube it like that so it'll cook quickly. It'll get soft quicker. Drop that right in this high quality H2O. And I use my purified water, of course, to cook in from my, um, let's see, from my one that I put on my faucet in, in my kitchen sink. Right 
right in there. So, um, I don't know if you guys make, I'm sure you do, or if you don't, make um, mashed potatoes and gravy. Here's a good way to make it. Or if you do make it, <clears throat> please leave me your recipes. I'm always researching different recipes or looking for a different way to do something. Um, I believe variety is the spice of life. And I don't like eating the same thing the same way every single time. So, if you have a way that you think is better than this or different or, you know, just, you just want to share, please share. Share, share, share. All right, we got those babies in there. And now all I need to do is let them boil. And get nice and soft. And then once they do, we'll drain this water off. And season. And get those flavors going in there. Once it is, I'll be back. To let you guys see what is going on. All right. See you in a second. Okay, so while I was off camera, I was assessing my meal and I quickly realized I didn't have any green vegetables. Um, so we have to have something green in our diet um, with every meal. At least I try to. So what I did was, I went and got my canned green beans out of the pantry. And anytime I use canned food, I pour all the liquid off of them that, come, that they come within the can and rinse them very thoroughly um, because I want to get as much of the can taste off of the vegetables as I can. And I make my own stock to put on there. And I just want to say as a disclaimer again that I am not a chef. I'm not a professional cook. I'm just a mommy that likes to make good healthy food for her um, child and soon to be two children. And I just want to share with you guys what I do just in case um, you wanted to start cooking more because we don't eat any fast food and we don't uh, really eat out very much at all. So most of our are probably about 90 to 95% of our meals come from this kitchen in my hands, which I try to cook twice a day. Um, sometimes I'll cook enough to have leftovers so I don't have to cook the next day, which is bomb. But um, I try to have something new and fresh for our taste buds every day as often as I can. Being pregnant, it is a lot harder than it is when I'm not pregnant, of course. So... Um, we do what we can, right? So anyway, what I'm going to do for these canned green beans is uh, we're going to put them in this pot here. It's a bit small for two cans, but we're going to make it work. And um, my daughter does not eat any meat. Um, I let her taste seafood when I get it for myself. <clears throat> but uh, she doesn't eat any meat. If you have any questions about that, you can ask them in the comments. I'll be sure to look at them and um, answer the best that I can. You guys stay res respectful, obviously, of course. But anyway, this is my bacon fat that I keep whenever I make bacon. And I use this to saute my vegetables in um, when I don't want to actually use the meat and forgive me if I get out of winded or out of breath because I am very pregnant eight months the baby will be here next month and um, I get very tired I don't know how many of you um, ladies out there mommies in your pregnancy it makes you extremely fatigued but I get extremely fatigued so um, on my days every single day of my pregnancy I'm either fighting Tyson Holyfield or um, what's his name Roy Jones you know Tyson he gonna knock you out first 30 seconds 
and you may last to the second round if he's feeling nice I guess but on those days it's it's I have to get out of bed and do what I do anyway but I'm fighting Tyson on the, on those days the days are a little bit better I'm fighting Holyfield you may go the distance maybe you will maybe you won't but you're going to be battered and bruised trying to fight through that which some days are like Holyfield but some days are just like fighting Roy Jones I don't know how many fight fans we have out there but um, I definitely love uh, the world of boxing and MMA and all that kind of stuff but Roy Jones he'll put on a show for you he gonna swing his arms and shuffle his feet and wink at the crowd and do all of that cute stuff and you are probably gonna make it to round 12 but you're going to wish you hadn't. <laughs> and uh, you're going to be definitely battered and bruised. So that's about the best <laughs> the description that I can give you of the three days. My, the three types of days that I can have. My fatigue is sometimes debilitating and sometimes I can fight through it. Most times I fight through it. Even on the debilitating days, I just have to sit down when I need to sit down and then get up and do it again or if I bring I might have to bring a chair in here but anyway so much for that that was my little um, break I guess <laughs> so I'm going to <clears throat> put my bacon fat in this little skillet right here I'm going to bring you guys a little bit closer alright get you guys in the action. I'll put a little bit of this. In there. Enough to saute my vegetables. See that? About that much. Um, it flavors the food without actually using the meat. Um, <clears throat> for those who are just vegetarian and not vegan, I think that'll be enough. I'll put a little bit more. For those who are vegetarian and not vegan. And for you vegans, you lovely vegans out there. You can just use olive oil, of course. I'm sure you know. As I do oftentimes. But this time we're using bacon fat. Alright, we'll get that, that eye on. And I want to cut it to about medium heat, which is about a 5 on this stove. Like straight at um, 6 o'clock. Can you see that right there? That's for this eye right here. Get that straight about 6 o'clock, which is a number 5 on this stove. And get that heating up. While that's heating up in the meantime, I want to chop my vegetables. My lovely vegetables right here. Um, I have a red bell pepper. And I like to put lots of vegetables in my um, beans when I make them. Um, for flavor, for color, um, but mostly for flavor. Like I said before, um, I think food, even if it tastes good, when it doesn't look quite right, it's a little bit off-putting to your taste buds also. So for children, um, I think they operate on what something looks like a lot, um, depending on your culture and what they're used to seeing. So, we want to make things appealing for the children to eat so we can satisfy their taste buds and for children who eat with their eyes, we want them to be able to get a belly full of good stuff. And when you're cutting bell peppers, it's best to have a very sharp knife because the skin 
sometimes is difficult to cut through. This knife probably is not as sharp as it should be. But again, I'm a mom on a budget like many of you. Or maybe not like many of you, I don't know. Maybe you guys can go out and get whatever you want, but I definitely have a budget, so I might probably just need to get a sharpening tool and sharpen this. This is how I cut my bell peppers. I cut them on the seam. So when I cut out the membrane, it's a lot easier to cut out. It's completely clean. A couple seconds. Put this in the disposal. sliced up and I like to slice them kind of thin when I'm putting them in the beans not too thin but about like that slice them about like that and then we'll turn them and cut them crossways to give them a pretty good dice peppers cut up. Again, the Holy Trinity for my family is bell peppers, garlic, and onion. This onion has a bad section right there. So we're going to just score that so I can take that piece off and throw it away. Alright, we're going to do the same thing to this. I cut my onion along these lines here. And then once I get to this part, I just flip her on the side there and keep, keep chopping. Turn this around, then chop it <clears throat> the opposite direction, well not the opposite direction, just chop it crossways to get a decent dice going. You do the same thing with this, just turn it on its side, and chop it again. These don't have to be very small. At least not for me, because um, once I saute them, they cook down. <clears throat> and uh, they're almost not even there. So this might seem like a lot of vegetables for two cans, but the flavor is going to be amazing. So, let's get over here to these pots. Let's get these babies right on in here. And depending on what you're sauteing for, um, bell peppers cook a lot faster than onions. You want to put your bell peppers in first. But I'm not really going to hard saute them because they're going to cook in with, with the vegetables also. So... Get all of this in there, and of course you need to start with a clean stove, for sure. I like to season every step as I go. Well, you hear me say that probably on every video that I cook on. So I just want to mix up all this stuff and get it all coated with the bacon fat. Mix that up really good. And the bacon fat is already pretty salty. So, it depends on your taste, how much salt, sodium you like to put in your food. But, I'll put a little black pepper on there. 
and a little bit of sea salt. So I always use sea salt if I'm going to use white um, white salt, just a little bit. Mix that up again. That's pretty good. We'll let that simmer for just a moment. While that's simmering, we'll check on this and get a fork to pierce it and see how tender it is. Oh yeah, that's ready. So that's ready to pour the water off. I'm going to pour the water off of that and bring her back so we can start getting that simmer down. Um, now that that is boiling, I'm going to transfer this pot with this pot so that I can get my chicken going. Let's see, is this hot? I think it's alright. Let's take this over to the sink. I'll be right back in just a second. All right, so the first thing I want to do is cut this fire down to about a two. So that's about a, right at about nine o'clock on the dial there. I want to get about three tablespoons of butter in there. that right on in the pool. Shout out to Plain Tran. Um, put some chicken broth in there. Well, yeah. I'll put just a little bit in there to get it going. Start out with about a full cup and we want to mash these down and this is what I'm using a masher to just mash it down with that butter incorporated in there put a little liquid in there so it's a little bit easier to mash and it's not scorching on the bottom of the pot while you're mashing it And potatoes with the starch, if you manipulate them too much, um, the consistency gets a little um, gets to be a little bit unfavorable to me. I don't like the consistency when you manipulate potatoes too much. So we just want to get it good and creamy. with a fourth tablespoon of butter in there. Okay. Then we're going to throw some onion powder. About a teaspoon of onion powder. a teaspoon of white 
pepper and potatoes um, suck up a lot of salt you put a you think you put enough salt in there and it's still bland so you have to put probably a whole tablespoon of salt but of course it's according to taste <coughs> excuse me we're going to put about I love black pepper so you season it to your taste but I'm going to put about a half teaspoon of black well a whole teaspoon for me but I would recommend a half teaspoon shake that around get these green beans in there okay I thought I was going to work some magic and put two things of green beans in here but I think I tricked myself <laughs> I think we're going to have to transfer that to a bigger pot. I don't think so. I know so. But anyway, I'm going to put, I'm going to fill it about halfway with this chicken broth. Because we want that to cook down. Let's see. Yeah, let's find a bigger pot for her. Because that, my friend, is not going to work. Or, actually, it's just the two of us. We'll rock with this one. With this one can. We have so many other things to go with it. And so I just want to stir this up a little bit. Because I want those vegetables to come off the bottom. And intermingle in here. So all of that good flavor gets through and through. I also, let's see, we're going to put a little bit more garlic powder on here. Oh no we're not. We're going to put fresh garlic in there. I'm going to use my cheap garlic. Here we go. My good old cheap garlic. Comes pre-packaged, pre-peeled. All you have to do is take it out of the package and do what you need to do. I like to smash all of mine flat. It gives it, uh, your dishes more flavor. I'm just going to give this a quick chop through. That was about three little cloves, but I love garlic. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to have to chop up a little bit more. It's not going to be enough garlic flavor for me. All right. We got those guys in there. Yummy goodness. And once you put garlic, onion, and bell pepper in your dishes, it really doesn't need much else but salt and pepper. Um, you want your food to taste like what it is and not just a crap ton of different seasonings. You can throw your garlic in to saute it with the rest, rest of the vegetables. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This time I definitely did not. So, since we used um, the bacon fat, we're not going to need so much salt. But this nature seasoning is a definite go-to for me for most things that I cook. So we're going to sprinkle about a half a teaspoon of nature seasoning, a little bit of black pepper, about a half a teaspoon black pepper, and it depends on if your children how much spice that they can handle. We'll get that stirred up, and then I'll taste it, but the flavor of the chicken broth the bacon grease, onions, garlic, and bell pepper, salt and pepper, 
That's just going to be yummy all by itself. So, I'm going to let that just simmer down. Simmer down, simmer down. We'll find a top for that. too wet because I'm going to put a little bit of um, heavy cream in there to cream up those potatoes real good. Alright, so this is about how we want it to look. You see how that, the consistency of that? You don't want it runny for sure. But you want it nice and moist. Alright. Um, we're still going to need some garlic powder in there. And let me also grab the half and half. of this kind of garlic, the one without, um, this has a little bit more potent garlic flavor than the one with parsley in it, to me. <clears throat> so when I really want a good pungent garlic flavor, I use this one. But this one is good too. I like the smaller granules though. So we're going to use the one with the smaller granules if I want some parsley. I'll just sprinkle that in there separately. And I like, again, I like a lot of garlic. So, I'm going to put about a tablespoon of garlic. I'm going to pour just enough milk in there, enough half and half, to make it nice and creamy. Give that a little mix. over to a spoon. Once this is done, I'm going to put it on low. Sit it on the back burner. I'm going to cut this corn to low so it just stays warm while I get this chicken speaking in this grease. Okay. That's going to be pretty much off. All I need to do with this, let's taste it and see. Mmm. Oh, that's good. However, it needs a little bit more seasoning. I'm going to do a little bit more. Put a little bit of paprika in there. And a little bit more onion powder. That will do the trick. Let's cut this green beans down. Then I can transfer it. I rinsed off this spoon. And your 
gravy is going to be very well seasoned also so you don't you don't have to try to over season your potatoes you just want them to have a good flavor so that they're not bland all right let's do it again mm. perfect that's it All right, we can take her off of the stove and we'll just transfer her to back here. Get our frying pan. On an eye, we'll get that covered up, keep it nice and warm, put it on very low and let that sit. Let's check on our green beans. Oh yeah, that's good. It's got a nice low boil. All right, now for our yummy chicken. Let's get to it, shall we? guys <clears throat> all right let's see so now we are going to dredge up our chicken we have the first just flour our wet batter and our flour, see my seasoned flour. I'm going to get that mixed up. Mix it up really good so it's nice and uniform in color. Alright, that's that. Now I want to give this wet mix another quick, another quick stir. Let me get that mixed up really, really good. Take this chicken <clears throat> that has been marinating overnight, and I will definitely put what I marinated it in. It's in a it's a coin tran recipe for Louisiana fried chicken. So we're gonna take this and put her in just regular flour. We want to. Let all the excess drip off. Give you guys a better angle. Let's see. Let all the excess drop off. Drop it in this regular flour. Off. Get her in this wet batter. And by the way, folks, this is the first time I'm cooking this. So you'll get to test it out with me. We'll see how it goes, right? Get all the excess off of there. Drop her in this. Let's see if we can get her in the shot for you. All right. There we go. Get this good old seasoned flour on here. And we want to pack it in. Pack, pack, pack it in. Pack it in really good. Alright. 
take off the excess. Put her right there. Do another piece. Dry batter. Shake out the excess right here. Dry flour. Make sure you get her completely coated. That good, so you'll have that good crunch going on. Once this is done, fine. Check out the excess. Wet batter. Check out the excess. <clears throat> Into this good old seasoned flour. And pack it in. Pack it in. Pack it in nice and good. You don't want your good stuff falling off in the grease if we can help it. Alright. Got that packed in pretty good. Check out the excess. We're going to lay her on top. Got one more piece. Last piece, by the time we're done doing this, that grease should be nice and hot. Just the right temperature that we need it. Get this baby in this flour. Yum. This is going to be so good, you guys. I already know it is. Yum, yum, yum. Um, at the end, um, I may do a mukbang with this. We'll see how it goes. And eating for me um, while pregnant is, woo, it usually um, puts me out for the count because I can't lean over my plate, so it's really like a, a major feat to actually just eat. All right. Got it nice and coated. Shake off that excess. Put her in the wet batter. Shake off that excess. Excess. Not excess. Alright. Then into the floured, the flavored flour we go. Make sure you pack that in, guys. That's very important. Pack that flour in there. Pack, 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 pack. That's how you get that good crust. That good crunchy crust. Which is exactly what you want. Pack, 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 pack. You want to shake off that excess. And um, I'm going to use Quang Tran's trick. What my mom and my grandmother used to do was run her fingers under the water in the sink. And look at that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, what my mom and my grandmother used to do is run their, once they rinse their hands, they run their, um, they use that water. They get most of the water off their fingers. And, uh, Splash the grease with just a little bit of water. And if it crackles just right, you know the grease is ready. But I'm going to try Queen Tran's way of checking his grease, which is grabbing a wooden spoon or wooden chopstick and putting it in the grease. And if it bubbles, then that means it is ready. So let me grab my wooden a wooden utensil here.
trusty wooden spoon. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. Is this grease ready? What do you guys think? <clears throat> yeah, it's got some bubbles. I don't know if you can see them, but they're definitely there. So, there you have it. Now let's get this good old chicken in this grease. What do you say? I'm ready to eat. Alright, so the grease is ready. We're going to take this, give it a quick shake, drop it right on in that grease. And you don't want to overcrowd your skillet. Drop that right on in that grease. All right. I'll let that fry right on up. And get everything covered. All right. I'm going to let that fry about 15 minutes, and then we're going to see what we have. See you in a sec. Alright guys, so we're going to get started on some gravy, some yummy scratch gravy. Alright, we're going to take about a... tablespoon, a little bit more than a tablespoon of butter, real butter, get that in there, let it melt down, I'll put a little bit of <clears throat> oregano, this is again plain trans recipe about a teaspoon of oregano about a teaspoon of basil and about a teaspoon thyme leaves. Um, I think I doctor it up a little bit for my own personal flavor. And gravy. I just can't hardly make gravy without the bacon fat. It's something about the bacon fat that makes the gravy. It just totally takes it up to where it needs to be. For me. So my vegans just um Stick with olive oil. All right, that's that. And you don't really even need a lot because the butter is very flavorful. But I gotta have a little bit of bacon fat in there for any gravy that I make. We're gonna let that melt down. Stir it all together. We'll season this again. I'm wondering why it's not cooking. I need to cut the heat up. Cut that heat up to about a six. Get it on going. <clears throat> that chicken looks like it's frying up pretty good. We'll see how Quinn Tran's recipe is. For his Louisiana fried chicken. See if we have some good crispy fried chicken. And while that is 
heating up. Yeah. I want to make sure my potatoes stay warm. Let's check on these green beans. See what they're doing. They have a nice little baby boil going to them. And so all you really want to happen is that good flavor to just start cooking in to those green beans. You don't want just the juice or the pot liquor to be seasoned. You want the green beans. You want everybody those green beans to be seasoned. And usually the longer you cook something, the more flavorful it is. And in order to cook something long, you have to cook it on low. Low and slow is... Low and slow is the magic combo. So we're going to do those green beans low and slow. <clears throat> you want to get this gravy going. Once we get that, Okay, let's make some more. Then we're going to do about three tablespoons of flour. I have to take my corn off of that eye so I can have enough space for my green beans. So we have it just chilling on the side over there so we can get these green beans going. I mean, not green beans, it's gravy going. So here we go. Just regular flour, guys. One. Two. Three. Alright. Let's start all that good stuff together. All right, get you guys at a better angle. All right. Okay, and I like my gravies to be a little brown. So we want to cut this heat down so that the flour does not burn. We want this. Well, I want my gravy to be a little bit brown. <clears throat> so you just let this flour brown up nice and good. And you have to continually stir it so that it does not stick to the bottom of the pot. And you do not want it to burn. Burnt flour does not taste good, trust me. I don't care what you do to the gravy after that. Once you burn the flour, you're going to have to just scrap it and start over. So keep stirring. And let her brown up nice and good. And you can smell the flavor. I'm gonna put a little black, a little extra black pepper in there. What you got, baby? Sugar? Why? Oh no, no sugar in the gravy, my love. Thank you. I love black peppered gravy. turn her over. Yeah. Give it a good little flip. Alright. Okay, I think she's brown enough. We can pour our chicken broth right in there. Two cups of chicken broth. We got a good stir. See the color on that? That's a good color brown. 
for what I want for my gravy to go on top of my potato my potatoes, my mashed potatoes. Cream garlic potatoes, that is. Thank you, have my little my little baby girl. My sous chef told me to check on my chicken. Thank you, honey. Yes, we want it to be brown. Alright, so we're going to cut this up and let it get a decent boil going. We're going to let her thicken up. Let it cook down and get nice and thick. We're going to take this chicken off of here and let it sit on some paper towels. Let's see. No, not quite yet. You see that? It's a little bit white on that part right there. You want that flour to get nice and crispy, nice and cooked. It's nothing like uncooked flour in the chicken. It's not very tasty at all. All right, we got about everything going, and we're almost done with dinner. After we get done, I'll plate it up for you guys, and we will see how it tastes. How you guys hanging in there? Y'all still with me? If y'all are still with me at this point, let me hear you say, what's next? What's next, Heaven? All right. You can put that down below in the comments. All right, that chicken is ready to come out of there. One chicky chicky. Two chicky chicky. one left and so what's very important is that you scoop the bottom of your pan because any pieces that fall off will cause your chicken to burn you don't want to do all that work and then have to deal with burnt chicken We scrape that out pretty good. Get all the big particles out of there. All right, set to go. Round two. All right, get this last piece of chicken in here. to eat. I don't know about you guys, but this is about to be delish. All right, in you go, right in the center. Let's get you completely drowned, little chicky. You got to be all the way under there. All right, got that last chicky in there. We'll stir this. Gravy, come on, boil. Yum. All right, we got that going. We'll see you guys back in just a moment. All right, so this chicken is ready 
I believe, come out. Yep. It's ready to come out. I'm going to put it right there. There's the good old Louisiana fried chicken, plain trans style. We'll see what that tastes like in just a little bit. Get this grease cut completely off. Let's check our green beans. That's doing good. Can you see that? We want to go around this grease because we don't want anything liquid to drop in that grease. That would not be good. And our potatoes are still warm. Very good. Now as soon as this gravy has thickened up, we'll be ready to rock and roll. <clears throat> Well, almost ready to rock and roll. I need to make my sauce for my corn. Alright. We're going to let her thicken up a little bit more. So I want to ask you, any mothers out there um, that have that well, of course, if you're a mother, you have children or a child. But any mothers out there when you were pregnant, um, did you get like chronic fatigue? And if you did, what did you do to overcome it? I would love to get some tips and tricks on how to overcome it because I did it with my first child and I was completely um, debilitated for the whole pregnancy. I thought I was dying or something. I don't know. But anyway, and for this one, um, it's pretty bad. Um, but with my first child, obviously, I didn't have anyone to take care of. So... You know, you mothers out there know probably a whole lot about mommy strength. So, I had to call on my mommy, my Jedi mommy strength, to get me through um, to taking care of my precious little person. Um, I can't just lay around in the bed and uh, nurse my overly fatigued self. I have to get up and go on with life. So, if you guys have any tips and tricks or anything like that, about how you overcame your chronic fatigue to do all of your mommy stuff. Um, please put it in the comments. Let your girl know so that next time around I will be set and ready to go. Alright, so let's check on this gravy. Let's check my gravy train. need this girl to thicken up. You need to go to the country girlfriend and come back thick, you know that? Either that or I just need to go to the pantry and recover some cornstarch. Because I am ready to eat. starving. You know us night owls. We're night owls in this house. As I said last time, we do all of our stuff at night and we wake up and uh, we wake up. Uh, we, we're up at night and we sleep during the day for the most part of the day or at least she sleeps during the day. I always have to get up and do this or that. <clears throat> but we're having our dinner. You see that time right there? Yeah. yeah. That's about regular dinner time. We'll sit down and eat. And I cannot go to bed on a full stomach. Not pregnant anyway. Um, I have horrible reflux. Um, I can't lay down. I have to wind up sleeping, sitting up. So I... Um, I have to chill out for a while, but this one doesn't go to sleep um, until probably 2. Otherwise, she'll wake up hungry in a few hours, and I hate waking up 
once I'm asleep. Uh, once I'm asleep, I like to sleep until I'm done sleeping. <laughs> until my body wakes me up if I can. Uh, and hopefully that is at least seven hours worth. But lately it hasn't. But anyway, um, yeah. So I let her stay up until her body tells her she's tired. And then she sleeps a full 12 hours um, max and maybe as little as 10 hours. And she's five. So I, get, I don't get quiet nights, but I do get quiet mornings. I can have a nice good amount of hours in the morning that are quiet to where I can just sit and plan out my day or get some washing done or maybe watch something on TV because I never get to watch anything unless she's asleep most of the time. So anyway, let me know how you're or do you do any of you have any night owl children? who just will not sleep at night no matter what you do. And mine was always like this. Like I tried to, I don't want to get in the way. I'm just crazy thinking of that. Um, and this was always, I mean, even when she was a few months old, I, would, I, I think I paced the floor for a good probably five months before I could figure out that she just was not going to sleep at night. I paced and sang and rocked and fed and <laughs> tried to, you know, let her play and tire herself out. And even if I got her to go to sleep, she would always wake up around, um, depending on what time I tried to put her down, she would wake up at the latest at 2 and be hungry and ready to go like she had slept all night. And I just can't... Um, I can't, I can't wake up like that if I don't have to. When I had to wake up for her all night for her to cook, I mean for her to eat, then um, I did that. But, okay, so this yummy gravy is nice and simmered down and it is ready to be tasted to see if I need to put something else in there or not. So let's see. good thyme and oregano in there. So we'll cut that down so it does not continue to thicken. Alright, you guys. We have done our do. Let's get this grease off of this stove so I can warm this corn back up while I make my corn sauce. All right, green beans. Yes, it's got a nice mild simmer back there. Can y'all get a look at that? It's got a nice mild simmer. That's what you want so that they don't overcook, but the flavor boils right through every piece of those green beans. You can doctor up Green, canned green beans to taste very good. They may not taste fresh, like fresh green beans, you'll probably always be able to taste the difference between fresh and canned green beans, but I guarantee you, they will be good nonetheless. All right, so for the corn sauce, let's see. We're just gonna grab any old bowl. It's just the two of us and we're not going to be making a whole lot of corn sauce. Let's get you guys back over here. All right. <clears throat> here we go. I want to use about one, two, three 
and a little bit tablespoons of butter. nice and softened because it's been sitting out. Seasoning salt, lemon pepper, black pepper, paprika, and sour cream. little corner of ranch dressing and no, it's upside down but Hidden Valley that's that's the one it's the only one I really like I haven't tried to make scratch ranch dressing yet but we'll try that one day all right that corn is the water steamy so that means that it is telling us that they, it's ready to go into the spit old butter. So let's be obedient and get this corn out of this water into this butter. All right. And I like to season my corn um, in the butter rather than just seasoning the butter um, I don't know maybe it's just me but I like that good flavor to get rolled in between every kernel of corn stir this gravy. You know the gravy will form a film on top of it if you let it sit. And that doesn't look very attractive, although there's nothing wrong with it. You stir it up and keep it moving. But I just want to give that a quick stir. Now, seasoning this corn. As I said before, I like salt. I know y'all might get me in the comments, but this is what I like. If you're a salt person, something to help counteract all of that salt is celery. Celery will help you counteract your salt intake. Um, celery is very good for that. And we keep celery around here. Celery is one of our healthy snacks. Alright, so seasoning salt. I love black pepper. I won't put as much on here for the sake of my daughter so it's not too hot for her. We'll give that a twirl. I like to whirl, twirl it around in the butter. The whole time. First of all, it helps to melt the butter. Second of all, <clears throat> it's just like basting the corn. It's delicious. All right. Lemon pepper. And I like to do this generously because if I have a lemon, I like to put fresh lemon in there. But I don't have a lemon right now. So we're going to use this good old lemon pepper. And you don't have to put a lot of salt when you use lemon pepper because it it um, makes it taste pretty <coughs> salty. All right, a little bit more lemon pepper. Paprika. You 
can put paprika on just about everything. I love me some good old paprika. And I'm gonna put my other cold ingredients on here um, until the end because I want my corn to stay hot enough to melt this butter. A little bit more paprika, turn it around. I like to get that seasoning on all sides. Um, I don't want to put a little bit of garlic. I'll put a little bit of garlic on here. This one, the fine granule, so you're not crunching on garlic granules. Just a little bit. And just sprinkle it on one side. And then twist it all around. And that good old butter. You can do this with a pair of tongs if you don't want to get your fingers dirty, but I don't mind getting my fingers dirty because I get to look it and taste and see if it tastes like I want it to when I'm done. And then I just wash them. Soap and water is your friend. And some sour cream lastly. Well, maybe not lastly. You still got to put that ranch in there. Hopefully there's enough ranch to put in there. <clears throat> and the liquid that you see on top of your sour cream, those are the that good culture in there that's good for you. Just want to put about a good heaping tablespoon on there. And my other piece of corn is still in the water, in the boiling water, so it'll stay warm. I'll put that in here and give it a toss <coughs> um, one time so it can get coated really good. And I just use these two pieces of corn rolling them around like this to mix it up. It gets the corn nice and coated, basted again, and it mixes it good into this good old butter sauce. This is delicious. Um, if you have not tried it, you must, must, must try it before you knock it. If you try this, let me know in the comments what you think and keep in mind that when you salt something you have to salt it to taste you'd rather not put enough salt than put too much because once you put too much you ruin it you can't you can't take that back but you can always add you can always add more and so your corn sauce is nice and thick it's nice and thick all right We'll let that sit in there. Let me see. Mmm. Mmm. That is it. By George, I think I have got it. Very good. All right. We're good to go. Let me get this plated up and I'll see you guys in a sec. Alright, so I got these creamy, creamy potatoes on the plate. And yes, we're eating on um, plastic plates, styrofoam plates. Nice creamy. Let me show it to you in the pot. Nice creamy potatoes. Nice and soft and creamy. They're actually good just by themselves, but we have gravy just to take it up a little notch. We got our nice fried chicken on top of our bed of potatoes. But this good old gravy. And these little white pieces in here are garlic. I cut up some garlic to put in there off camera. We're just going to pour a little bit of that 
over this good chicken. Let it uh, run on down to this good old mm, yeah. Yeah. That's what you want right there. Let's see. It's okay if that gravy gets in with this with these green beans. See all that good stuff in there? A good flavor. You see how flavorful the wad, the pot liquor even looks flavorful. All that good stuff in there. Don't worry about that gravy. It's just going to add a little extra flavor to it. I like to eat several different things in one bite anyway, so... That's how that's going to go just about anyway. Green beans. Mashed potatoes and gravy. And corn on the cob. Let's swirl one of these things around in here. And get her onto the plate. Alright. I think I may go ahead and have two. Mm. You need some of this in your life, y'all. A little bit more butter sauce. All right, now let's get to tasting. You get a knife. All right, and a fork. Let's see what we are working with here. It's going to be very hot. Mmm. 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 That good flavors in there. Mmm. Mmm. And these are thighs, y'all. Mmm. 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 Oh my God, that is good. Mmm. All right, Queen. That's delicious. Mmm. And it's spicy. Mmm. It's not too spicy, but just spicy enough. Mm. And the spice doesn't kick in for just a second. It takes a second. That's so good. Mm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> mm. Mm. That's all right right there. When you hear that crunch. Yeah. Now for this corn sauce. Lord Jesus. Mm. I don't know. I feel like I'm blocking the shot. Let me just pick this up. Don't need it to me. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. You can't beat this, y'all. You cannot beat it. Mmm. Look at that good sauce. You cannot beat it. Mmm. Yep. Mmm. It's delicious. So, 
there you have it people a delicious pretty healthy meal it's not fast food but it's not gourmet either it is a good family meal that your children will enjoy your husband will enjoy and you will enjoy and it doesn't take that long to prepare and cook let me get this good thumbnail for you guys mm-hmm mm. Mm. finger looking good Yum. Anyway. Mmm. Here, get a bite. There you go. Get that bite right there. Go ahead and get you right of that corn right quick. Mmm. Green beans. Oh. Anyway. I am starving. I'm ready to sit down. This baby has about kicked my insides out. So, I will bid you lovely people adieu. I need to eat, clean my kitchen, and get some rest. I love you guys. If you stuck around, thanks for sticking around. And I will see you again on the Cornucopia for our very next video. Hopefully it will be very soon. So stay tuned. Stay blessed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Peace.